Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV. Today I want to go over the most common furnace problem. So on average, every, for example, every six furnace calls, one of them is guaranteed to be this problem. So to begin with, take off the top door on your furnace. Sometimes it'll be held in by some screws. Other times, like on this American Standard, which is the same thing as train, the doors will just pop off like this. And then once in a while, on some train furnaces, you have to take the bottom door off before you can take the top off. But anyways, one way or another, get the top door off, and then with your thermostat calling for heating, just look and see what your furnace is doing. And while it's turning on here, I just want to go over briefly how it works. The very first thing that starts will be your blower, uh, your inducer motor right here. So this thing will turn on, and after the inducer motor turns on, these pressure switches, if you have a two-stage furnace, typically you will have two. An easy way to know if you have a two-stage or a one-stage is you'll have a red and a black and a white. Whereas if it's just a one-stage wire, you'll have two wires coming out of here and that's it. But anyways, inducer comes on, pressure switches close, then the igniter starts to glow. We should see that start to glow in a little bit here. The igniter is the one with two wires going to it right here usually has a plug. So right there you see the igniter glowing. That bright orange glow. Then the gas valve opens and the flames turn on. And notice how they only stay on for a couple seconds and then they turn right off. If you're seeing your furnace burners doing that when they only just come on for a couple seconds and go off, it's almost guaranteed that your problem is a dirty flame sensor. And the flame sensor is on this side right here and generally it'll have one wire going to it. It'll be on the opposite side of the igniter. So it's right here and it's held in by one screw. So to remedy this problem is actually very easy. All you gotta do to begin with is turn off your furnace power switch. And while I'm turning this off I also want to mention that sometimes, not sometimes, but almost all the time, the newer furnaces have a lockout feature. So if the furnace tries to ignite five times in a row and it goes off, because of that flame sensor, it'll go into a lockout for three hours. Where it'll just sit there and do absolutely nothing, and then in three hours it'll come back on and try again. And in order to reset that lockout, all you gotta do is turn that furnace power switch off for maybe five seconds, and then turn it back on, and that will reset it. But anyways, to clean this flame sensor, just take it out. It's usually held in there either by a quarter inch uh, nut screw or a Phillips. Mine's a quarter inch. So take out the screw and wiggle the flame sensor out. Most of the time it'll be an L-shaped. But there are many different styles of flame sensors. They can be straight, they can be L-shaped like this, they can be long or short. If you see, my flame sensor has some buildup on it. And this buildup just comes from the carbon inside of the flames and also the front door right here. See how it has all these grates? It's sucking air in for the combustion for the flames. And you know, whatever particles are in the air, dust and whatever other debris, also settles on this flame sensor. And with time, when you have enough of a coating on here, it'll prevent the flame sensor from sensing any flame. So to clean the flame sensor, you can either use a dollar bill or a $5 bill or a $10 bill, depending on how much you have in your pocket. But just grab it and clean it up real good. You can use some fine steel wool. Or what I like to use, this tends to work the best and last the longest, is a scotch Bright pad. Almost like a dishwashing scrubby. Just grab the flame sensor real firmly. Press down hard, no matter what you're using. Um, sandpaper is not really recommended because it tends to be too abrasive. If you scratch this rod, then the stuff will stick to it even faster. So this scotch bright pad works the best. So just press hard and shine this thing up. I don't know if the camera will be able to catch it, but it looks a lot better than it did when I originally pulled it out. So once you clean that up, you stick it back in.
and put the screw back in as well. And on a side note, I work on many furnaces and some of them the flame sensor is not nearly as easily accessible as this one. For example, some carrier furnaces will have the flame sensor, the burner box will be up here and the flame sensor will be behind the burner box. And there will be some venting here and some piping and an inducer motor all in front of it. It's super hard to get to. Your options are to either try to take apart the piping or the venting or maybe even take out the inducer motor just to get to the flame sensor. Or what I like to use is this flexible bit extension right here. That way you can just put it on your drill and try to reach in there from the back and get to it that way. But even with this flexible bit extension thing, it's pretty hard to get to. But for that reason, I also have multiple extensions like this. I got the 12 inch long extension, then you got the four inch, then you got the 75 degree bit holder right here. This comes in pretty handy. There's also some ream furnaces that have the burners down here and you have about an inch of space between the burners and the floor of the cabinet, the furnace cabinet. And it's really hard to get in there. I usually end up getting some needle nose and try to pry the flame sensor out that way. But those reams do tend to be pretty annoying. And one more thing I should point out that will make a difference is your venting. If you have a high efficiency furnace, you'll have plastic venting, the PVC pipes, either white or black coming out of your furnace, generally there will be two, sometimes there will just be one, or you'll have steel venting like this going out your chimney. The steel vented furnaces are 80 percenters and then the PVC vented ones are 90 percent efficient. The 80 percent furnaces like mine right here, the burner box is open and you can see everything, whereas on the high efficiency furnaces the burner chamber is usually sealed up. So it'll have a cover over it and generally that's just held in by five or six screws. You take all those screws out and you can pop that cover off and then you'll see all your burners right there. But I am totally sidetracking. Anyways, we cleaned our flame sensor, shined it up. Now we turn our power back on and see if that'll make a difference for us. So once again, the inducer comes on, the pressure switches prove draft, then the control board will send 120 volts to the igniter and you can see it glowing right there. Then the gas valve will open up the flames light and now my flame sensor now that it's clean is sensing the flame and just if you're curious how it works basically the control board sends the flame sensor anywhere from 50 to usually 120 volts mine's about 60 volts usually it's about 90 on most furnaces it sends voltage to this flame sensor and that voltage actually jumps from the flame sensor onto the flame and to the burner face to make a connection to ground. And the control board senses that voltage drop and it keeps the furnace on. Now if the flame sensor is dirty, it prevents that voltage from making that jump onto the flame and onto the burner. So it turns off the gas valve and shuts everything off. Well, as you can see, my burners are staying on. Problem is fixed. Well guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Just so you know, this video is a condensed version. I have another video where I talk a lot more about this and go into the more of the technical issues and other problems you can encounter while doing this and more tips and tricks involved with the flame sensor. So if you want some more info about the flame sensor and issues regarding that, do check that video out.